Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on the topic of linearity of RF power amplifiers. If you are new to this channel, I will request you to please subscribe it and also like this video if you found if you find it interesting and also don't forget to visit our website www.poweramplifier.net. The purpose of this video is to understand the significance of the linearity parameter of RF power amplifiers. It is important to understand them more closely because when we read through research papers or the data sheets, these are encountered over and over again and sometimes the understanding may not be very clear and this results in not understanding the overall picture of the theory or the topic which is discussed of the power amplifier. So in this video, all the important parameters are combined and shown in this short video tutorial. It is hoped that after viewing this video, the viewer will gain more understanding about them and he will he or she will feel more comfortable in reading those complicated publications or the tutorials of RF power amplifiers. So here in this figure I show all the important parameters which we will be briefly talking about and this figure shows the RF power amplifier in the middle, the input and the output. On the input side, it's written signal quality, PAR and CCDF. So this means that the, at the input we give the signal and this signal is characterized by PAR, which means peak to average power ratio. I, I say the complete term. And CCDF is also a very important term closely related to PAR in PAPR in some way. And we will talk about this in a minute. And then when the signal goes inside the power amplifier, the system is characterized by what p1db ip3 imd am to am am to pm right so th these parameters characterize the power amplifier and then when the signal goes out of the power amplifier what happens to it is is the harmonics harmonics is very important then comes evm then comes ac aclr or acpr and again see if it's also written here PR and CCDF. So the point is the signal goes in inside the power amplifier something happens to it and then when it comes out we characterize it using some parameters. So we discuss all of them one by one and try to understand what are the meaning and significance of each is. The very first parameter is CCDF. It means complementary cumulative distribution functions. So the thing is that every signal which we give to a power amplifier it can be either a sine wave or it can be a modulated signal in amplitude or it can be a modulated envelope signal or it can be a mix of amplitude and phase modulated signal so all of these signals can be characterized by one very important parameter and this is ccdf ccdf in simple word means that how much variation in amplitude exists with that signal so here in this figure, we see that the sine wave has a very low CCDF because sine wave has just two main levels and it has intermediate levels when the signal goes from one peak to the uh, bottom trough. But as we can see, an o OFDM envelope has a lot of signal level. So it has a very high, uh, very high CCDF, right? whereas the white noise has an extremely high CCDF, right? So this means on the x-axis, you see that K in dB above average. So it means how much variation the signal has above its average value. So white noise has a very high variation about it, average value. It means a lot of levels exist in white noise, whereas in OF, whereas as we speak about the OFDM in it is also a significant levels whereas the sine waves has very less levels. So this is a very important factor here. And this is CCDF function. This is used to characterize the different waveforms which are given into power amplifiers like LTE waveform or a Wi-Fi waveform or any other waveform, right? So it is a very important function. Next, also related to this CCDF function is the PAPR or PAR as we saw in the picture. Peak to average power ratio means that how much variation exists from the average power and the peak level of power. For example, if we have a LTE signal, it can have a peak to average power ratio around 6-7 dB, right? It means that 
a lot of variation in amplitude exists of this signal from the average value. Similarly, GSM value don't have very high peak to average power ratio, right? So peak to average power ratio is related when a signal is high amplitude modulated signal. So like LTE signal is a mix of amplitude and phase modulation. So it has very high peak to average power ratio. And this is very important to know to characterize the power amplifier in terms of efficiency because the back of efficiency is very important and there are a lot of tutorials in my channel as well in which we talk about the back of efficiency envelope tracking and this is all about the peak to average power ratio based signals which, necess which needs uh, the power amplifier to be highly efficient both at uh, higher power levels but also at back of power level so this is the peak to average power ratio so we saw two uh, important uh, Two, two important definitions one was uh, ccdf and another was peak to average power ratio then comes the three i combine them three in one picture this is p1 db p set and iip3 p1 db is 1 db compression point p set is the uh, saturation of the power amplifier and iip3 is the third order intercept point so please remember this one very important rule of thumb or a very important rule that whenever an amplifier has a p set and p1 db close to one another it is a highly linear amplifier so remember this p1 db and p set should be as close as to each other so right so now comes to the definition so p1 db as you might be aware it's the point in where which the gain is 1 db below the compression so 1 db below the compression is the p1 db point p set is the point where no more gain is available, the gain becomes flat and the amplifier compresses. And IIP3 is the slope of the third order uh, intercept point, so it's a third order polynomial and it is uh, usually around 9.6 dB in theory from the uh, P1dB point. So these are three very important linearity parameters. You should be always aware of it whenever designing a power amplifiers as uh, uh, yeah, uh, when to look at which one, which one is very important. So P set is super important, IAP3 and P1 dB. So try to make amplifier which, in which P1 dB is close to P set at it will ensure very high linearity. Again, IAP3 should be as high as possible. So now come to other uh, points which are harmonic, sorry for the spelling mistake, and the IMD3. So harmonics are the uh frequency components which comes out of the power amplifier like second harmonic third harmonic fourth harmonic fifth harmonic and uh, uh, they represent the nonlinear response of the system similarly imd3 uh, are the close uh, uh, frequency components which comes out of the power amplifier which is close to the fundamental uh, frequency and they are generated by when two tones are given and uh, and uh, so suppose a signal is given as suppose a power amplifier has two tones given so it will generate the uh, high band and low band imd3 products and they, they represents in fact the channels uh, the the close by interferers or the, or the close by communication channels in the real power amplifier based transmitter system so uh, they can go so these signals can go inside the power amplifier and this can corrupt the nearby channel so imd3 should be as low as possible from the low or high components of the signal and so similarly one uh, in this slide as we can see this is uh, another very important point there's a lot of literature about it that uh, these imd3 points can be are highly bias dependent and by correct manipulation of the bias point we can get very uh, high suppression of imd3 and this point usually is called a sweet spot and this is in fact related to the cancellation of GM and CGS uh, nonlinearities of the power amplifier. So they have opposite phases by correctly adjusting the bias point and this results in significant reduction of the uh, IMD3 component. So these were the other uh, two parameters. Now we come to AM to AM, AM to PM and the memory effects. So AM to AM, AM to PM are uh, means that uh, the power amplifier undergoes nonlinearity in its gain based on the input amplitude. 
right similarly the power amplifier output phase also related to uh, the amplitude is given so there are other two also like uh, uh, pm to am as well and pm to pm but uh, right now these two are very important which are em to am and em to pm so the uh, these are very important in when characterizing a power amplifier and they have a close relation to memory effects so what memory effects is memory effects are is related to the physics of the power amplifier and it means that uh, whenever a certain input is given it will generate a certain output but another time uh, the same input will be given and it will generate a different output right so here you can see a constellation of points for example here a certain input is given so it can result in a range of values it does not result always a same value all the time similarly the same goes in phase this is due to memory effect and this effects are highly highly undesirable and the memory effects occurs in almost every physical system and it's highly dependent on the input and the physics of the underlying physics uh, of the device so the only way to get rid of memory effect is by uh, linearization or the dpd is one method to get rid of memory effects and we don't want memory effects in our power amplifier because it really makes a power amplifier useless uh, a device when put in a real communication system so when here we can see a lot of em to uh, em effects and when we linearize this amplifier using dpd digital pre distortion that is so we have very very less uh, memory effects here right so memory effects can be reduced by using dpd the same goes with the um, uh, due to the em to pm distortion so we, here is the input amplitude there is the output uh, amplitude uh, it should be phase as well so sorry this is the phase and this is the amplitude sorry it was a mistake so this is the input amplitude this is the output amplitude and when we linearize it through a dpd we re it results in a uh, reduction of the am to am effect and this is uh, sorry it was a mistake so this is the phase am to pm conversion is shown here so a lot of phase variation is there and when we linearize the phase variation goes away to a significant effect so these also are very important uh, criteria for characterizing power amplifiers AM to AM, AM to PM and memory effects. You might not find them in every paper but this is very important to consider especially when designing a power amplifier will be used commercially. So again uh, some words about the harmonic distortion sorry again for the spelling mistake so harmonic distortion results uh, in the no nonlinearity it's very simple uh, I think many of you are aware so here we have the uh, I think this is the this is a fundamental second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, fifth, and so on, and it, it can be also shown in the time domain. It has some peculiar shapes. You should uh, know those shapes as well. What shape the second harmonic looks like, the third harmonic looks like, and so on. Yeah. So this is the other parameter, which is ACPR. So I usually call ACPR as uh, the system level parameter the other work circuit level parameter this is a system level parameter so acpr is related to the harmonics it's related to imd3 and it is related to em to pm it's related to everything in some form or there it is a very strong system level parameter and the point about acpr is that in acpr we have this spectral mass given and we want that no output of the power amplifier should go above this mass so this mass is uh, dedicated by the is, is defined by the communication authorities right so whenever a power amplifier design it is made sure that no signal get out of this range so if the signal level goes out of this range it means it will do extra radiation into space and corrupt some other channels and it is not allowed by law as well so a power amplifier designed as close as much to this spectral mass without violating it and as efficient as possible so here we have uh, the power amplifier as shown in this figure so uh, this amplifier is uh, when it was designed it was in blue shape so here it has some bad uh, linearity so when dpd was applied it was reduced which is digital pre distortion so it it goes much better so the shoulder height goes low similarly this is also this acpr uh, the same so we have adjacent channel and alternate channel so we have requirements that these uh, yeah, marks are never violated in commercial communication system it's not allowed by law as well and this is when we look into the uh, network and uh, the network analyzer and the, we look at the mask there 
and then comes the EVM. EVM is also a system level parameter. It turn it, it tells us how much phase shift the signal, uh, how much phase shift has been encountered by the signal due to the non-linearity of the system and suppose we have a signal in the iq plane so this was the original signal and when we measure it has moved here so this is the phase error so evm is correctable and so is acpr but again when correction will happen it will result in more system complexity and of power consumption and some other effects so but acpr and evm are the system level parameters and we should keep in mind these are related to psat imd3 uh, P1DB, those are circuit level, these are system level, but saying that they are decoupled, no, they are all related. If you have a good P1DB, IP3, PSAT, definitely these will also be very good and also good AM to AM and AM to PM as well. Yeah, so uh, that's all about this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Uh, please visit our website www.poweramplifier.net. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also like this video. Thank you very much.